This car is one of the things that I've always wanted since I was a teenager. My friend Mark's older brother used to live right down the road from us. Every day I'd see him drive back and forth in the black convertible. You know, I'd go over there and help him mess with it. I'd have to hold a wire because the battery wasn't charged. And then he'd start it. Cool, thank you. And then he'd take off. I love that car. So that's what brought the love for the 63 Impala for me. I bought the 63 based off of a few conversations, 20, 30 pictures over the internet. When I decided it was time to start working on it, that's where you can start seeing what was wrong with it. There was a panel, it was riveted on top of the original sheet metal with the silicone behind it. And as I took that off, there was no bottom of the car. It was just straight rot and rust. There was an actual stop sign. It was molded for the floor pan. I didn't have money to send it to a shop at the time. So we had to fix it on our own. After we took all the rust out that we could, I had half a car. Talk about an overwhelming feeling of, holy smokes, what did I get into? I just wanted a clean, original look, but also add subtle touches to it. I was gonna put airbag suspension. I wanted her to lay when I parked somewhere and then just enough to raise her up and be on my way. The vanity mirror has the comb on there, you know, flip down your visor and you can slick your hair back. It has an old Dinsmore compass back in 63 as well. That was a rare option back then. The older I get, the more my taste changed. And I was like, I don't want to go for flashy. Let's go for classy. Let's go for subtle. I take this car out to relax, to clear my head. That's my time to slow down. I'll take her from here to the mountains and I'll just turn around and bring that same road right back. But on the way down there, I have all these people giving me the thumbs up, saying hi, beautiful car, can I take your picture? Can I take the car's picture? It makes me feel good. Growing up here in Albuquerque, cars were a way to keep me out of trouble. We grew up on the west side of town. The gangs were bad up there. The car is what kept me away from drugs and kept me out of trouble. And the same thing with my brother. It kept us at home or it kept us with a group of guys that were into the same thing, that weren't into getting into trouble. They just wanted to work on their cars. If it wasn't for cars, I would probably have a different life right now. I, I really think that it saved us from taking the wrong turn and heading in the wrong direction. I do feel like I'm part of a bigger tradition, especially with this car here. The lowrider lifestyle is more than cars. I believe it's family because you see a car passed down from the grandfather to the father to the son. And the lowriders, they hold true to that. A lot of these guys work nine to fives. You know, they're piecing these cars together little by little, but they're doing it with the help of family and friends. You'll see a little boy out there wrenching on his car with his dad. I have lots of pictures where I have my kids out there taking off bumpers and stuff like that. We put the Ramirez plaque on the back of the car because this car is and was built by the family. It was me and my brother, my wife, my boys had their input on it. And so this car is us. So when we made this Ramirez plaque, it was the intention of this is my family. This is what we're about. This is just a family affair. My little boy is into this car. He understands what it's about. That probably is the most rewarding part of the car. It has nothing to do with any kind of accolades or anything like that. It has to be that he has a goal now. And he strives for it. I'm hoping that he continues to keep it and that he'll pass it on one day as well. My name is Juan Ramirez and this is why I drive.